brings you to the protest today? Um, so I'm a Liberal Democrat councillor and parliamentary candidate, so obviously the environment's hugely important for us anyway. Um, we've seen organisations like Extinction Rebellion calling for a climate emergency. I think we're taking it seriously in this country. It's absolutely shocking to see what's happening in the Amazon. So just this week, I took my seven-year-old to London Zoo to go and see some of the amazing creatures that come from the Amazon and to have to try to explain to him why we're here today. I've come here today because we can't simply stand by and watch the planet that we rely on for our lives being destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and why is it being destroyed? It's being destroyed because people are greedy for profit. Yep. And all they can think about is short-term profit. When the truth is, you can't eat money. It's the burning of the forest that the new president of Brazil has caused by his uh, capitalist and extreme right-wing um, politics. So the president is actually saying that it's being caused by slash and burn? Sure. Do you know um, much about Slash and Burn, what it, what it entails? Yeah, so um, it's an absolute lie, isn't it? Let's be really honest. I mean, this is a president that is really well known for being completely sceptical about climate change, completely sceptical about science and facts. And actually, I'm really sorry, this is actually more about corruption. So what Slash and Burn consists of is basically they, just, they burn all the Amazon, get rid of it, get rid of the, the trees, and they replace it with crops, yeah. and they sell up they sell the crops on to other parts of the world, mostly soy production, um, or they, they use it for grazing for animals. Um, so I completely agree, I think we should be here, we should demand that, that something needs to be done about this. But would you agree with me in saying that on some level it comes down to our, us as consumers as well? Because if we're buying the products that they're selling in the supermarket, then we're supporting that supply and demand. Of course we are, and I think, and I think that's the issue for us in the West. It's really easy to come and join a protest. It's actually really difficult to make a big change in your life or to understand that whole supply chain sure. and where you fit in as a consumer. Of course the, we, we must take a responsibility yeah. because what we all do individually and collectively contributes to this problem. If there was no profit to be made from this trade, they wouldn't be doing yeah. it. They'd be doing something else instead. So um, I love meat. I love eating meat. It's delicious. I heard that 91% of Amazon rainforest destruction is caused by animal agriculture. Did you know that? 91% of the destruction is caused by... The Amazon rainforest is, is caused by animal agriculture, so making space for crops to feed to animals. Oh, animal, animal production. Agriculture, yeah. Yeah. 91%, yes, that's yeah. very high. I presume that includes crops that are fed to the animals. Absolutely, that's it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so mostly soy that we feed to animals here around the Western world. That's a high figure, yes, I'm yeah. quite surprised. It's an Oxford University study from last year, yeah. um, and it was the most comprehensive study um, about farming and um, the environment, and they concluded that the single biggest thing we can do on a day-to-day -day basis in, as individuals is to switch to a, a vegan lifestyle. Yeah. I think veganism has kind of become a, a new kind of cult thing though, hasn't it? I think we started down that path when people started, uh, started to demand that uh, we had free-range eggs available. I can remember a time when there was no such thing as a free-range egg in a supermarket, and now we take it for granted that there will be. And if we, if we vote with our spending power, yeah. then it can be achieved. Absolutely. Um, what, what does free-range mean to you? Do you know what that means? Um, no, it's tricky. It is a tricky one. I mean, and there are all sorts of different definitions. But I try to, I just try to go for what I see as a good quality brand. Yeah. So I think when we see the word free, free range, we sort of attribute what we see as freedom to the product. So we imagine um, animals living what they want, being completely free. Um, in reality, it means they're not, they're not caged. Yes. Very often they're in a barn. Or Absolutely. Like Thousands that. of them. Yeah. They can be bred so overweight that their, their legs are breaking beneath oh, them. Don't, I know. Don't, it's get, it gets worse. Don't, it gets worse. Don't, because I still eat a bit of meat. They put the male chicks into a grinder, ground, ground them up while they're fully conscious. Um, I didn't know they did that when they were fully conscious. Would it be enough to stop you from, from buying eggs? <laughs> I have to answer yes. <laughs> yeah. I think what you need to do then is to publicise that fact and I think the more people really would stop um, yeah. eating eggs and, and then you see you would have the, the boxes might then say free range um, and males included. You've got to make sure that 
people can afford to do it too every day you know yeah, that yeah. it's not a middle class thing right because it kind of is right now it, it should be available for everybody beans lentils uh, pasta rice like this stuff is like is probably the cheapest food on the planet yeah it's yeah. totally basic right but then again i guess you know you've got a, you've got to have a bit of time so what do you think happens to the males i'm guessing they go into some sort of meal they get ground up while they're fully conscious yes. um, and they get thrown out as way. Fully conscious? Yes. Get out of here. Yeah. Male chicks in the egg industry, they fall into a grinder and you can see this online, they get ground up alive because they're waste. They, could, they don't even sell them, it's waste. So. I'm going to have to look into this. You are. <laughs> what would be a good way or an ethically acceptable way to kill an animal then for you? Um, well, a normal way with many animals in this country is uh, electrocution for the birds. Um, Does that sound ethical to you, do you think? Well, it's supposed to be instantaneous. Uh -huh. If I had a, like a dog in front of you and I electrocuted him in the head, <laughs> would you try and stalk me? I think it's a bit... Um, um, it's a bit kind of aggressive of you asking me these questions on on air and also with um, recording um, because what we have to do is to um, um, would that be enough to convince you to stop eating eggs because you don't want to vote with our money do you know the other week i decided i'll try and veganize a, one of my favorite cake recipes yeah. oh what a disaster we mentioned it not being humane the way they kill those chickens what do you think would be a humane way to kill an animal well you speak to somebody who's in favor of, of um, voluntary euthanasia so it's me too so there has to be a good way to um, die so would you agree with me in saying that um, voluntary euthanasia is a, is a position where the person wants to die it's in their best interest to die it's the it's the choice. And do the animals get a choice? Well, of course not, because we can't really communicate with them on that level. Yeah. So, so would you say there is a, a humane way to kill an animal if we don't think they want to die? Well, yes. In the same way that someone choosing euthanasia, I'm sure there is a humane way that they can be killed. But so why don't we apply that to the animal? We must be careful about blaming and shaming. This is one of the ethics of Extinction Rebellion, who has organised this demonstration against the policies of the new Brazilian government. Yeah. And so it's difficult when you put people on the spot. I appreciate that. Where even if I was an owner of a boiler house or a laying um, egg um, facility, it's, it's a bit difficult you putting uh, an individual person on the spot. Um, I appreciate that, and I'm certainly not trying to blame or shame anyone. I'm kind of trying to raise awareness and get people questioning this, this issue. Um, because if we look at it from the, the animal's perspective, something needs to be done. People need to know. And yes. you said yourself, you, you didn't even know the male chicks are ground up alive. So how, you're not even making an informed choice. You're being That's deceived. Um, and I think it's good that the public is informed. And I think it's good that you do that. But it's a bit difficult if you ask someone to come down on a yes or no, on a personal basis sure but but would you agree with me in saying it's it's not so much personal when there's a victim to our choice so there is an animal that's suffering if we make the choice to to buy the product if the animal doesn't want to die so six month old pig how do we justify killing them well this is a very strange area because if you look at a six month old pig it doesn't know that um, the choice is death now or death in another six months' time because it's going to be death. For all of us, I anyway, suppose. Anyway, anyway. For all of us. So, um, my standpoint is kind of if we treat animals humanely and with care and then we kill them humanely and with kindness. How do you, how do you... I can still <laughs> have a bacon bat. Do we have to watch where we're standing? We have to draw so, a line somewhere sure. between morality, convenience, and living ourselves. I completely understand what you're saying. There, there is like a, a line to be drawn, but surely 
not stabbing an animal is like a, very much a, a baseline that we could easily just not do. We could easily just buy the soy, soy milk or the oat milk or the vegan sausages. It's, it's, a sim, it's a process of just picking up a different product and you're not exploiting that animal. How do we kill an animal with kindness if, if they don't want to die? How, would you how, do we, how do we put our dogs to sleep? But we do we but do we do we not do that when we think it's in their best interest? Yes, of course. And when we when we kill an animal for food, are we doing it for them or is it for us? Well of course not, we're doing it for bacon. So so is it the same or is it different morally? Oh morally, it's very different. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know do you know how the gold standard for killing pigs in the UK, the gold standard? We put them into gas chambers. Oh, I mean it used to be a boat between a the... Would that would that be ethical? It was very quick. Yeah. And it knocked them out. Bam. If I get a Labrador puppy in front of you now and get a bolt gun out, oh, don't say are you gonna are you gonna try and stop me? Oh, I would ruin you. <laughs> <laughs> if I replace it with a pig, would you feel any different? I wouldn't want you to kill anything before my eyes, apart from a mosquito. If I, if I took the pig behind a wall where you couldn't see me and did the same act. Bolt gun slit their throat, would it still be wrong? Well, essentially, that's what happens every day. Yeah, and is that wrong by your standards? It's what happens in an abattoir. Is it wrong, though? There's no, there's no yes or no answer to that one. Is there not? I'm not going to condemn people because of the culture they've been brought up in and the way they have been fed and what they have have become to expect is a healthy, balanced diet. I can't condemn people I, for I that. I understand that. Uh, do, do you we were pretty much all fed things as a child that we perhaps wouldn't eat now. For sure, for sure. And in China they eat dogs and they're brought up doing it. It's not, it's not inherently their fault. It's no one's fault. It's a, a social norm. Yes, of it's a social course, norm. Of course. But do you think that social norms can lead to a moral acts? Well, yes, of course. Let's let's say the word Saudi Arabia. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's plenty of norms there. Women are treated so poorly. And if I was to say to you, oh, if I, I was to, wait, if I, women are treated poorly. Uh, yeah, it's not. In I know. Saudi Arabia, I know. Quite it's living hell. It's a living hell. It's a living hell. <laughs> But if I was to say to you, well, I'm not going to condemn them because it's part of their culture and they've grown up that way. It's part of their culture to stone the woman to death. So I'm not going to condemn it. What would you say to me? You choose your battles. <laughs> would you say that, that the culture is irrelevant to whether something is morally acceptable? I don't think the culture is ever irrelevant. I agree. You have to try and understand their culture. Yeah. And you have to try and, you know, walk a mile in their shoes. Mm -hmm and then work from that position, not just coming in and saying, I know best, but, but I if, am more moral than you. But if, but if you could stop women getting like stoned in Saudi Arabia, yeah. would you go in there and stop it? If I had that power, obviously, yes, yeah. I would. And if you had the power to stop the, the death of animals in the UK, and we all live a, a vegan lifestyle, healthy, would you do that as well? If somebody gave me that power, uh, it would be kind of wrong of me not to exercise it. <laughs> so you agree with the end goal of veganism? You want to live in a vegan world? I love bacon. The eggs could become more morally um, responsible by having boxes with uh, maybe in a free-range label in future should be only given to those companies that are producing free-range but um, using the male chicks or killing the male chicks in a different way, using the male chicks for meat, um, growing them and killing them later. Do you think that getting pleasure is a good enough justification to hurt animals? Oh no. So is getting pleasure from eating meat a good enough reason to kill animals? Well... A blender in front of you, right? And I put a baby chick in there. And I say, you press that button and grind up that chicken and you can, and then to do that, if you grind up the chicken the price? to eat eggs for the rest of your life, would you press the button? Yeah. Seriously, you'd grind up the chicken while, you're, while they're alive? I'd just look away. Would you press the button? If I'm being honest, to eat eggs the rest of my life? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, you have to consider that nature is red in tooth and claw. Just because it happens in nature, that doesn't make it moral in today's world, in, for us to do it, right? Because animals also rape each other. So I'm not going to go and hurt a woman and say, well, it happens in nature. If I'm going to stop raping, I'm going to have to disconnect from nature. You'd say, what's natural is irrelevant. You're, you know right and wrong. Don't hurt people. But when we're talking about killing protein, 
killing protein. Killing Animals. Protein. That's how I'm saying it. <laughs> when we're talking about killing protein, or for protein, um, I don't think you can be so condemnatory because there are some people who desperately need that extra protein. Are you one of those people? No. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I'll leave it there. If I give you a card about veganism, would you consider watching it? Of course I would. Oh, thank you.